In this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step step how to connect your custom GPTs to WhatsApp. This has been a highly requested video because many of you have created awesome GPTs and want to break them out of the ChatGPT site and start using them in the real world via things like WhatsApp and get access to its over 2 billion monthly active users. By connecting your GPTs to WhatsApp, you can tap into this massive user base and completely automate key tasks within a business like customer support or lead generation or even appointment setting for your business or for the businesses of your clients. The issue with all this is that connecting AI assistants to WhatsApp can be an extremely painful process. So I wanted to create this video to walk you through the easiest method that I've found so that you can get things set up and avoid the mistakes that I've made in my own experiences. To show how this integration works, I'll be setting up a WhatsApp lead generation chatbot for my own education business from start to finish. And as always, I will be giving away the templates, the code, everything that you see in this video at the end so that you can steal this build and start to use it in your own business or sell it to others. If you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Liam Otley and I run my own AI development company called Morningside AI. And I also run the largest community of AI agency owners in the world where my students learn how to make money by selling AI solutions to businesses, just like the lead generation chatbot that you're going to build in this video. Let's get into it. So what are we actually going to be building? In this video, we are creating a lead generation chatbot for my AAA Accelerator program, which allows people to ask questions via WhatsApp to my assistant, which is helping them to learn more about the program and then eventually go for a lead capture once they're ready to purchase, which is going to grab their phone number and their full name. And we're going to log that to a CRM using Airtable. So that we have the system set up that allows them to learn more about the product from a knowledge base. I'm going to give it a document that you guys will get access to as well. A document that has a ton of information from my website and elsewhere that tells the, the AI essentially everything it needs to know about the program and allows people to ask questions about that before capturing their lead and allowing our sales team to follow up from there. In order to create this functionality, we need a few things. Firstly, we'll be using the Assistance API, writing that within Replit, and then connecting Replit to ManyChat and ManyChat is going to send the messages automatically to WhatsApp. I know that might sound like a lot, but I've done 99% of the work for you. You just need to download the templates and connect them up on your end, and then you're ready to go. It is worth mentioning for those that are new to the channel that what we are building today is different from the GPTs that you've probably built in ChatGPT on your own and go through the ChatGPT builder and creating them there. What we are building today is different from that and that we are able to take this functionality that we create and then connect it to different applications. In this case, we are doing WhatsApp. I've also got a video on Instagram. I've also got a video on putting it on websites. So what we are building allows us to create a GPT and then connect that functionality to wherever we want to put it. Now with the GPTs you create on the ChatGPT site, it's locked within ChatGPT and you can't start to use that functionality elsewhere. So we are building with the Assistance API to allow us to deploy to different channels like WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. And that's why I'm so big on teaching this Assistance API side because it allows you to do so much more and create so much more value for your business and for other businesses as well when you know how to use it properly. To start this build off, you need to clone my Replit, which is going to be available in the first link in the description. You can sign up to my resource hub or log in if you already have an account. And once you sign up there, then you can click on the Replit, which would be one of the links. You should be greeted with this page. You'll need to sign up to Replit and create an account. It is free. And on the top right, you can click on this fork button, which is going to clone or copy my entire code base so that you can use it yourself and make a couple edits as needed. So I'm just going to put fork at the end of this. I'm going to fork the Repl. Give it a second to boot up and you'll see something like this, which might look familiar to many of you by now. I don't want to get stuck in the weeds trying to explain this because there's not much you actually need to modify. But I will say if you head to the functions.py file, if you do want to change the document, here's the knowledge based document. As I mentioned, this chatbot, this lead generation chatbot has a couple of components. If you go back to my three ingredients idea or concept for these uh, GPTs, we have knowledge, prompting and actions. In this case, I have given the prompting, which is available in this prompts.py file. So if you want to change the prompting for your WhatsApp assistant, you can come to the prompts file, modify this, and these changes will be reflected in the new assistant you can create. So here's how you can change the prompting. If you want to change the knowledge, I have a document here on the left panel called knowledge.docx. This is referenced down here in the create assistant function. If you want to change the document, you need to delete it on the left panel. You need to upload a new one. And then in the functions.py, you need to change this document name to be the same as the one on the left panel. So that's going to allow you to change the document and the knowledge component. Then we have the tools component. We have the retrieval tool, which is necessary to add the knowledge base. So you have to have this if you want to have custom knowledge. Then we have the tools. This is the lead capture tool. As I mentioned, this chatbot has a lead capture functionality. And this is the only thing I've put in it just to keep it as simple as possible. So if you want to change your functions or your tools, you can copy and paste this whole function into ChatGPT and ask it for new functionality or new tools to be added. To get this working on your end, you just need to change three things before running this. Firstly, we need to get an OpenAI key. So I'm sure you know how to do this. Platform.openai. 
www.ethereumsoft.com. You can create an account if you haven't already. You can log into your account. And then on the left panel, you will have an API key section and you can click create a new key and copy that key. As I mentioned in my last video, if you want to use this properly and for it to work, you do need to head to your settings and go to your billing. You need to add a card to your account and you also need to buy some credits here by clicking buy credits. You can add five or $10 so that it can charge your account properly and be ready to give you access to all of the latest models that will make this thing work. So you do have to do that. I will mention that now. Once you have your OpenAI API key, you can head back to Replit, scroll down on the bottom left to the secrets panel. And then if you click on the uh, edit button here, the three dots and paste this in, then you can get your OpenAI API key in there. You can update the secret. Next, what you need to do is get your Airtable API key. So if you haven't already created an account, you can go to my resource hub. There'll be a link to not only sign up to Airtable and create an account, there'll be a link to copy this base here that you can see on screen. So this is what you'll need. It has the name, the phone number for the lead capture. And there's a button up the top corner here called copy base. You'll click that and you'll be greeted with something like this where you've actually copied the entire CRM and you have it editable on your end. So phone numbers, names, questions, etc. To get your Airtable API key, you can click on your profile on the top corner here, click on developer hub. And then under this personal access token, you can click create a new token and it's going to appear here. You can copy that personal access token and then head back to Replit. And then again, you need to click the three dots on the Airtable API key delete it and paste in yours. With the Airtable API key, you need to make sure that it says bearer space than your key. This is something that a lot of people get stuck on and you need to make sure that you can click this eyeball button so it shows you the entire key. Make sure that it says capital B-E-A-R-E-R, -E -E -R, bearer space, and then your long token. If you haven't included bearer space, your token and then saved it, then it's not going to work. With both of those Airtable API keys updated, you can head back to Airtable. And in this case, we want to stay on this developers page, but click on the web API documentation. You can scroll down to click on the Smith Solar CRM that you've just cloned from my resource hub. And then on the left panel, you can click on the accelerator leads table, then create records. Then you will see this URL here, which is going to allow you to push and create new leads on your Airtable base. And with this, you need to copy it, bring it back to this create lead function, and then replace this section here. So boom, boom and we're all ready to go. With that, we are ready to run our application for the first time. It's important to note that this is when the assistant creation step happens, and here's the function that we need to go over. So the way I've set this up is that if there is a file in the left-hand panel called assistant.json, as you can see here, it's going to attempt to load the assistant ID from that file. If there isn't a assistant.json file, meaning you haven't already run this app before, then it's going to create a new one with the settings that you provided here. When I run this app for the first time, what it's going to do is run this create assistant function, and as you can see on the left-hand panel, it just created a new file called assistant.json. Inside, this is where it's going to be storing the key or the identifier for the assistant that you just created. So the assistants are a combination of knowledge, prompting, tooling, and that all gets combined together when you interact with the OpenAI API. It's going to create that assistant as a single being, and it's going to give you back the ID to be able to talk to that programmatically later in your application. So what happens if there's no assistant.json file, meaning you haven't run the app already, it's going to create a new assistant and save the ID here. And then every time you run the app after that, it's going to load from the file if it is there. So in this case, if I stop this app right now and I reboot it, it's just going to read the assistant ID from that file which means that if I want to modify my assistant, I want to go into the functions.py file and I want to change the knowledge document, I want to change the tooling, I want to change the prompting, what I need to do is delete my assistant.json file and reboot the app and it's going to create a new assistant with the settings, save it, and then in the future it's going to reload that. So that's how you can update and delete and manage your assistance within this application. For those of you who are looking at this and feeling a bit overwhelmed and out of your depth, I have good news for you because my team at Morningside AI has been working on something extremely exciting and special for you all, and it's called Agentive. The team and I are extremely excited to unveil some more details about what it is and what it does exactly, but all I can say is that it will drastically simplify this creation process for you and take out all of this complex custom code and allow you to create it in a much easier way and start to implement this stuff into your business without having to deal with custom code nearly as much. I am fortunate enough to have a personal brand that attracts some of the best AI development talent in the world to come work for me. So what we're about to put out is really the culmination of a ton of work that we've done over the past couple of months. So I'm extremely excited to get this out to you all. The good news for you is that next week we will be launching our beta test and it's going to be exclusively available to the first 500 individuals who sign up to our waitlist. For those first 500 who are quick, you'll be getting 12 months of free access to Agentive. So I highly recommend you signing up to get on the waitlist as soon as possible. If you want to get first and free access to a platform that is going to drastically simplify 
the workflow that I'm showing in this video. A ton more info on this is coming, but I thought I'd mention it now so that you can get in on that wait list and get into that first 500 before it's gone. Down in the bottom right, your screen should look a little bit like this. In this bottom corner, you should have a little red area here, so don't worry too much about that. That's just because what we're building it on is not a production grade or production ready server. I do have a video coming on this, so if you want to see how to actually deploy this to a server that can handle a lot of volume and actually be used in production in your business or for clients' businesses, make sure you subscribe to the channel because that's coming sometime next week. And above, you should see this not found web view. Don't worry, this is what we're supposed to be seeing. All you need to do is click on this new tab button in the corner and leave this tab here because this URL is what we're going to use in the next step, which is setting up ManyChat so that we can actually connect this to WhatsApp. To get the ManyChat integration with WhatsApp set up, you need to head to my resource hub and there will be a link to sign up to ManyChat firstly so you can create an account. And once you're signed up underneath that, there will be a link to this template on screen so that once you're signed up and ready to go, I'll put a, a little video of me signing up and doing the sign up process for WhatsApp. What you need to do is Make sure you have a Facebook page and a Facebook account. You can sign up to ManyChat using your Facebook account. It's like a social sign-on. And then click on the WhatsApp option, which will allow you to start to go through the process of getting a number and setting up the WhatsApp integration. You need to create a WhatsApp business. So you can just give a bit of information. Then there's a little verification step where you have to get the SMS code from ManyChat put it in and then once you've done that, you should see a little celebration screen showing that you've successfully connected this new ManyChat WhatsApp number to your ManyChat account and you can start sending from it. Once you've logged in and created your WhatsApp integration, you can come back to this template page which will be linked on the resource hub and then you can click the save to ManyChat button in the bottom right. It'll pop up with something like this so you can choose the account you want to save the flow to. I'm going to view the flow and everything should be pretty much ready to go on here. What you need to do is set up the trigger so the trigger is going to be what triggers this automation. In this case, I want to click on WhatsApp and I want to have it on a keyword. So you need to have the pro account in order for this to work because firstly, we're using this particular trigger, which is using a keyword, but then also to do the external request steps within ManyChat, you do need to have a premium account or a pro account. I think it costs $20 or $15. So that is the price to set up this integration. But if you're doing this for a business, it's well worth the money in my opinion. So to set up the trigger, I'm going to click on new trigger, go to WhatsApp and then user sends a message as a keyword. In this case, I want it to be test. And I'm going to click create down the bottom. So this is going to trigger when someone sends this number a keyword test. And now I can walk you through how this application actually works. So we have a few steps here and each of them corresponds to what we have within our replit. But we just need to go through and head back to our not found page that we opened before. And we need to copy the URL, including the HTTPS. So copy the entire URL, and then head back to ManyChat. First step we need to do is create a thread and modify this URL. Delete the old URL and paste in the new one. And it should be your URL slash start. Don't worry about anything else. You're good to go there. We're saving the thread ID from this. And then we have, hey, first name, what would you like to know about the accelerator? I would be happy to help. Then we are listening for a free keyboard input so the user can enter their input. And we're going to be saving this to the last reply variable. You can scroll through. And then we need to start the run and send this information off to OpenAI to start generating our response. Send it to our assistant with their settings and, and how we've configured it to deal with this user input and generate our response. Again, we need to come to the URL section and just delete the old one and paste in our new one. In this case, it should have slash chat at the end and everything else is good. We're passing the thread ID that we created earlier and the last reply from the user and sending this off to OpenAI to generate our response. Then the final step here is checking the status of that request that we've sent to OpenAI. So we keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. And as soon as it's ready and they've cooked up our response and it's ready to get back, then we can grab it and pull it back into our application. I don't want to get too deep on this like I did with my Instagram one. So if you want a deeper breakdown of all the nitty gritty of how this application is actually working and the replit, there'll be a link up here to my Instagram video, which is kind of the same as this, but a little bit more in depth. If you want to know the ins and outs of the application, then you can click up there. Once you've replaced this URL and you have slash check at the end, we can save this. And then with that, we are ready to give this thing a whirl. And the final step that you need to do to set this up is to come to this and assign this to a member of your team. In this case, I've got Shania. And this is when there's an error that's picked up by our replit, by our system. It's going to assign the conversation to a human and make sure that no one, the AI isn't trying to respond to, to errors and stuff like that. So we've got a human handoff step here. Once that's all done, we can click the update button and a live version has been updated. Now we can go to our settings and go to our WhatsApp deployment. And we have all the settings here. So if you want to modify your WhatsApp business and how it's set up with a mini chat, you can come here. In this case, our connected number is this. So I can copy this and I'll message them on WhatsApp now. Once we've pushed the update live, we can click on this preview button and switch it to in WhatsApp. And then we can click the preview button here. It's going to give us a link. Now I want to do this on my phone. I'm going to copy this and text it to myself. 
If I click on this link and it's asking me to open in WhatsApp, which is great, start a new chat. And so right away I can delete this and I can say, like, let's check what our trigger was. It's just test. So if I go test, if we go back to our replit, we can also see what's happening in the background here, make sure it's all working correctly. New conversation started. Hey, first name, in this case, hey, Sean, what would you like to know about the accelerator? Would be happy to help. How much, oh, I'm in caps, does it cost? An intentional promotion of my accelerator here, but it is a good use case. So it's starting a run, and there we go. Pretty quick responses as well, that only took a few seconds. Standard plan, 97 monthly. Um, okay, great. What benefits do I get on premium? So this is all pulling from the knowledge base here. It looks like garbled nonsense, but you will get access to it on my resource hub. It's actually a normal document. This is just how it's processed on Replit, and yours will look the same too if you modify it. These are actually coming back really, really quickly compared to my other tests, so this is good. So it's giving me back the premium exclusive benefits, and at the end of it, you can see here, it's actually asking for my name and phone number with country code. So this is going for the lead capture. In my prompt section, I have instructions here to uh, go for the lead capture at some point in the conversation where it seems like they're ready to convert. So it's asking me for my name and phone number. I can say um, Kim Possible plus 64216667. Great, thanks Kim. And our, and our air table, we have Kim Possible that's been added to our CRM, ready for our sales team to follow up. If you ever run into issues while testing this app, be sure to come back to Ripple and check what's going on, which will break down Okay, the run was in progress and then it required an action which it performed successfully, created the lead and then it sent the response back. So everything should be displayed the way I've set it up. It should be continually printing information as it goes through all of these responses. And that's it for the video. I've shown you how to create your assistant within Replit. I've shown you how to connect that to ManyChat and then get ManyChat communicating with WhatsApp as well. Knowing how to do this opens up doors to super powerful use cases for GPTs but I get that some of you may struggle with the more difficult parts such as on Replit. And so a reminder that my new tool, Agentive, is opening its doors to its first 500 members, which will make this entire process that you've just gone through as easy as just a few clicks. So make sure you head down to the description and sign up. If you're one of the first 500 people, you will get 12 months of free access for being an early supporter of us. Aside from that, if you do want to learn more about building powerful GPTs for your business or to sell to other businesses, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I have a ton of new videos coming, including how to deploy these to production grade servers so that you can actually run this at some sort of scale and you can start selling it to businesses. Because what we've set up here in Replit is good for testing, but not good for proper live applications. If you can't wait for my next videos, what you can do is join my AI Business Accelerator, where we have some of the smartest and sharpest AI entrepreneurs all moving on this GPT's opportunity and sharing knowledge around. Plus, I'm in there doing workshops on this exact kind of stuff multiple times a week. As mentioned, all templates and resources are available on my free resource hub in the description, so don't forget to check those out so that you can get the Replit, the mini chat, and the Airtable template, as well as the knowledge based document. Everything related to this build is gonna be available down there. And finally, if you're not already in my free Telegram, I'm giving away free information and, and sort of my daily learnings and things that I'm discovering with these GPT. So if you're not already in there and you want to stay up to date on things, you can sign up with the link in the description. And while you're down there, leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed. I've been putting a ton of work into these for you to show you all the different ways you can use your GPTs. So continue to support me. Let me know that you like this content. Please leave a like on the video. If you've enjoyed this video and want to know how to put your custom GPTs on your website, you can click this video up here where I go into depth on it. But aside from that, that's all for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.